and welcome to Back to 8-Bit. Uh, today I'm going to do a complete walkthrough of Peter Pan on the ZX Spectrum. It's a text-based adventure game from the uh, from 1984. Um, it does come in like a, a very interesting VHS style video case. Um, there is a reason why it does that and I'll show you as you go into the case. With the uh, game, you get a copy of the uh, Peter Pan book. Okay. Also in the case, you get the uh, instruction manual as well. Well, pamphlet, should we say. Provides you uh, some instructions on how to play the games, including some other key commands that you need to uh, get yourself through this adventure game. The, the couple of things that they do mention in the book actually is that to get yourself through the Avenger game you do need to have some understanding of the story of Peter Pan and it's encouraging obviously uh, teenagers like myself when I, well, I was when I had this game was to read the book uh, and which gave me a massive advantage then to actually playing the game and solving some of the problems in the book in, in the game. And there we have the uh, cassette as well. Okay. Now, this game is. I I I think this is this is a really good adventure game. I quite like it. it is, in all fairness, it's probably the first adventure game I ever played on the ZX Spectrum. Um, it's got some really interesting puzzles. It's not too long. Um, and again, it, it relates very much to the story of Peter Pan. There are three issues with this game though, um, which come up quite regularly uh, when people play it, is that even though it's a text-based adventure game, there are um, graphics, graphical screens that uh, appear, but they are very slow at drawing. Now, Personally, for me, um, I don't really have an issue with that because back in the 80s, we spent a long time waiting for screens to load on a spectrum just to admire the artwork of a game when it's loading. Um, and again, it's very new to us back then, seeing graphics on a computer and playing a game. I think, you know, you, you tend to enjoy the moment when the graphics are being drawn up on the screen. In today's standards in today's world yeah i suppose <laughs> it does get a bit tiresome waiting for it to load and if you are playing this on uh, an emulator or the uh, spectrum next you know it may be you may be able to increase the speed of the processor uh, which again in turn you know speed up the uh, the graphics but there's only about five or six you know screens in this game the most of it is all text-based the other uh, fundamental uh, issue with this game is when you get to the second part of the game you go into the forest now within the forest it is very easy to get yourself killed um, and it is completely random as well there's no skill involved at all with trying to stay alive while you're in the forest you do get to encounter several different enemies as you go through and if you do meet them they will kill you uh, and it doesn't matter where you go in this forest there's no set pattern to them. And if they, if they do come onto your screen, you know, it's curtains for you. So it's very important during this stage of the game that you save the game regularly, uh, especially at every key point before you travel from one uh, location to another. Always worth saving. So if you do get killed, you can just load that save state back up again and carry on from where you left off. Uh, without having to start the game from all over uh, all over again. Um, something I don't really agree with in uh, adventure games where you can get yourself killed. I think adventure games should be all about exploring and solving puzzles and solving problems and working your way through. I don't think you should be punished uh, during the game, especially when it's something as random uh, uh, as the way you get killed in this game. There are also a couple of locations as well in this game where you will you can get yourself trapped um, if you haven't got a specific item that you need to get yourself out of somewhere um, and you you know you you then can't 
for the life of you get yourself away from that situation and again uh, you do have to stop the game and try and go back to one of your last save points to try and find out where you went wrong the other issue is a slow keystroke responses so when you are typing your instructions out into the uh, uh, computer it seems very slow at the response rate of, of of getting those characters up on the screen and that does lead to mistakes happening where you are mistyping things or missing letters out of certain commands it does take a you know it's not it's not it's not a deal breaker you know you, you can get used to it and and you know if you do go wrong you can just you know delete the entries and that, that, that's another issue that people had they didn't think there was a delete option on there but if you do read the manual it does tell you that you press the zero button to delete. If you're familiar with Spectrum, the delete button is on the zero. You press the cap shift button and the zero button. Um, but with this particular game, you don't need to press the cap shift button to delete. Um, nowhere in this game do you use any of the numerical keys on the keyboard. Um, so it's just a straightforward pressing zero does delete that entry. Uh, but once you get used to the speed of the keys, you can get around it and you, you, you know you do get used to it um after a while one thing i, I that is good about this game is that a lot of the proceeds went to great almonds street children's hospital uh as you're all aware uh peter pan the trade name for peter pan was donated to the hospital also on the back of the uh, leaflet there's a peter pan competition and it does make me wonder how many, if this ever got action, how many people actually did this. When you complete the game, um, a password flashes up on the screen to prove that you've completed it. And you have to write the password down onto this little slip, put your address on, cut it out, and send it to the uh, address on the back of the slip. Uh, the first 50 correct entries would win, well, would win a signed copy of uh the, the 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 latest color illustrated edition of peter pan and so uh, it does make me wonder if anybody actually received that or anybody actually did fill in this coupon and if you do if you did well you know leave a comment and uh, let us know and let us know if you did get that book anyway we'll pay, pay uh, special attention to this when we get to the end of the game and we will see if uh, a password flashes up at the end okay what I will do uh, throughout this game as well, when we are playing it, because of the issue with saves and getting killed, I will regularly make saves. I will pause the recording so you don't have to sit through all the uh, uh, <laughs> or, or, or the activities of saving the game. Um, and then I will go back to the, and if I do get killed, I will go back to that last restore point and try and make our way back uh, through uh, the adventure I will put notes in the comments as well of the actual solution. So if you do lose lose track, um, you can resort back to those notes. But I'll, I'll go over it again uh, when we're playing uh, the game. I will be playing uh, on a ZX Spectrum on real hardware. Okay, I will be loading from a traditional tape recorder as well, uh, just to get the you know just to get the full feel of how this game used to play. Anyway, no further ado, I shall get everything set up and uh, we'll begin the adventure. Okay, the game has now loaded. Um, when we run through the game, um, all the clues uh, are in the, the text that you see come up on the screen. They are also in the pictures that you see illustrated as well. And sometimes the only clue to some of the riddles are in the picture and not in the text. So you do need to spare, you know, pay attention to both. All the commands that you need to input into the game are included in the instruction leaflet. There is nothing 
there is absolutely no command that you need to input into the computer that is not included into in those instructions. Okay, and again, I remind you that uh, when we do get to the forest, I will make regular saves. I will pause the recording uh, and take us back to the original uh, place. But you'll you'll see what I mean when we go through to that uh, area. Okay, let's make a start. If you do need more time to read anything on the screen, uh, don't forget, uh, you just can just pause uh, the video. And this is what I mean, the, the, the drawing of the uh, illustrations are quite slow, uh, but back in the day, you could just sit back and enjoy watching this unfold and watching the drawings unfold it was completely new uh, back then and it was rare to have a, a text adventure game with any graphics in as well And I think that's the only bit of sound you get in the game as well, actually. There's no sound at all in this game. But I don't think there was much sound in many adventure games, really, back then. Okay. Now, your inventory, you can only carry a certain amount of items. So you don't need to carry items that you don't need and we'll you know we'll go through this in the game anyway um at the moment we can see a bar of soap and uh, a cracked jug the bar of soap has n it's just a red herring there is no there is no need for that bar of soap at all in the game um i know in the book uh the soap is used by uh peter pan uh, i think he had a go at trying to um uh, so well stick on his uh, original um, shadow uh, using a, a, bar, a bar of soap which obviously failed uh, but as I said you will pick up bits in this uh, game that you know are from uh, the book itself okay let's start by taking the jug Let's examine jug. Okay, we can see fairy dust now, so let's take the fairy dust. Open drawer, or if you noticed in the picture, there was a chest of drawers, and that's the shadow. We now need to open. We now need to open the sewing box. So we've taken the needle and we take the cotton. 
Oh, I can't carry any more. Ah, you know why? I still got the jug. Okay. We now can stitch the shadow. Just check the inventory. Or is it just I? Okay, so we can drop the needle and drop the cotton. Okay, and now we can fly. Okay. After this um, animation, we will be in the forest. And that's where we need to make regular saves. And I will make my first save as soon as we get to that forest. Second to the right and straight on till morning. Okay, at this point I will save. Okay, it looks like we've already got an enemy coming towards us as I was saving. Um, but I will pause the recording now, get it saved, and we'll continue where we left. Okay, I've now saved the game. Okay, we're now start off in the forest. And first of all, we need to go. Hold on, there's a few things going on here with the enemies. Okay, right, west. We're lost now, lost in the forest. So we go west again. And then we go east again, and there's no real map to this uh, uh, pattern here, because you go west, east, west, and it, it just seems to be like a combination. And then we go south. And 
and we go west. Okay, we are now at the beach. Okay, that's great. At this point, I will save the game one more time. This is a, 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 a safe area uh, before we do the next instruction. It's always when we cross in the forest, there's a good chance of being attacked and killed. So I'm, just to play safe, now we've crossed that bit, I will do another save. Okay, that's now been saved. As you can see, there is something flapping around in the tree. So what we now do is climb tree. And now you can see a kite. We take the kite and we go down out the tree again. And we go east into the forest. And we go north. And we go east. Then we go north. And then we go east. And we're back to the north south forest path. Okay. We now go north. And we go east. Right, we're at the Mermaid's Lagoon. And in the uh, text, you can see um, a large, rich cake. Now, first thing you want to do there is take the cake and you'd want to eat it. But don't do that. If you think back to the book, think back to the story, this is the part where Hook tries to poison uh, Peter Pan uh, with a poisonous cake so if you do eat this cake you will die so ignore the cake just leave it there don't do anything okay you then want to go east and that's us now swimming to uh sw well swimming into the uh, mermaid's lagoon We now want to go east. And this is where you meet Tiger Lily. You now need to untie Tiger Lily.
And there you have it. You have now saved Tiger Lily's life. But forgets you and leaves you there. Okay. Now, this is the part that I mentioned at the start when I introduced the game, that there are parts of this game you can get yourself trapped. And this is one of them. Um, you can no longer um, swim because you're too tired. And if you do try and swim back, you will die. Okay. This is why we got the kite earlier on, because you're now going to use the kite to help you fly off the island. Now, when we've done that, it will land you anywhere in the forest. So the first thing you've got to do is to try and work out where you are in that forest and get yourself back to a point that you do know. Um, at this point, I will save the game again, um, just in case we get totally lost, you can always come back to this point, but hopefully uh, it won't drop us too far from the location where we need to be. But I'll cover that when we get there. Okay, I will pause the recording and save. Okay, now being saved. And now what we need to do is fly the kite. Now somehow we've got to try and find our way back to the to a location where we were told uh, that the mysterious river is to the east. And that way we can navigate to the next part of the uh, map. Now we, we could be anywhere now in the forest. So you've got to just play around and experiment a few different locations to try and get yourself back uh, to the uh, mysterious river. And there you go, we've just been killed. And this is why we need to save the game regularly because we cannot control that at all. So I'm now gonna pause the game and load the last saved state, which is where we took off with the kite. Okay, I've taken us back to where we've just flown the kite. Again, dropping us into the middle of the forest somewhere. So we've got to try and find our way out of here now. So let's go east. Okay, let's go west, we've been there. <laughs> and we've been killed again. Okay, time to pause, reload and come back. Okay, we're now back at the point we uh, left left off. I've just flown the kite again. And luckily it's landed me uh, right near the mysterious river where it shows the river is to the east. So we can take the map from here. Um, fingers crossed when you, you see the locations we come to, you may be able to get there a bit quicker if you land closer uh, to the uh, camp that we're about to go to. So first of all, we need to travel south. And then east. Uh, 
and then south again. And that should take us to the mountain path. See what I mean about the uh, regular saves are so important to this game when you're in the forest. Getting killed is so random. You could go for ages without being killed or you can have a regular spell being killed quite regularly. It is really unpredictable. Okay, we need to go east. And we need to go north. And we have the uh, the vast uh, Perari. We now need to go north again. And it takes us to the Indian camp. Now, the past the last few locations we've been to when you do land anywhere in the forest after taking off with your kite you could go to any of those locations that's what i mean you could get to this location much quicker uh, but the furthest point you really need to find really is that mysterious river to the east location which is what exactly what we've just covered to get to this location so that is the hardest and the most longest way to get to this location if you do land any closer to it, it is a complete advantage for you Right, we need to go east. And we are now in the wigwam. You now have to examine the wigwam. And you see a sword. So you get or take sword. I have now got the sword. I now go west. Pretty much back to where we came from again. And we go north. We need to go north. And this is where we find the brass key. So guess what? We're going to take the key. We 
We now need to go west. We need to go west again. And when we get to the forest west of the Par River, this is where we need to wait and wait for some pirates. Now, this could take a couple of attempts at waiting, or it could take a few. You might need to go backwards and forwards or the crocodile around, but we still need to wait. I'm pretty sure they all leave you alone at this point, but I could be wrong. Nothing yet. So the crocodiles are around, but the pirates are not showing their faces yet. And if this goes on too long, we might just need to head ourselves in a different direction and come back maybe. Okay, let's go east and west again. And we might need to go and try and find them on the north and south path. Okay, let's go north. Oh, <laughs> a new picture. Go back to the forest south. That's it. We can see the pirates now, and uh, part, just waited a bit longer. And the pirates approach. You now have to enter the command kill pirates. Now you've got the wooden sword. It should work. Right, go north because they went north. So we've got to find the follow the pirates.
This is very hit and miss now until we catch those pirates. Okay. Kill pirates. Before they move off. Fantastic. We've got that point. Now, as I said, if you do get a point where you are waiting for a long time and there's been no sign of those pirates, my only advice would be is to load your last saved game again um, and just go back and try it again. And eventually, the pirates will show up. So we need to go back south. And south again, and we are back to that point with the river path. We need to go west. And we need to go south. We need to go south. And south again towards the little house. Okay, so you've got to go to the, into the door which is on the east, but first of all you've got to open the door. Okay, and then go east which is the, into the door. There you go, the house is now being relocated. Okay, now the door is on the west again, because that's how you entered it, but this time you must run west. That's the command that you need. Okay, and now you have to kill pirates. Okay, you've now killed the pirates. You now need to unlock the door. You do have the brass key already. So you should be able to unlock the door. Okay. And now we can open the door, which is the door 
to Hook's cabin, I believe. And the cabin door is to the west. So we go west. And this is where we meet Hook. And we go kill Hook. Okay, let's go to the next screen, see what happens in the fight. Okay, and now we need to go up. And we have now completed Peter Pan. And that's the final screen. And if you remember back to the start of the uh, the video, the original leaflet asked us to record the password that was flashing on the end of the screen. And the password is Kensington Gardens, which is uh, uh, the, which is where the uh, the children live. And I like the little message at the end. The adventure is complete. Now, or soon, I'm afraid you are now going to have to grow up unless you want to play it again. And that's it. Well, thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed uh, the walkthrough to Peter Pan the Adventure Game. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, if you've had a go at it, any problems you've had with it, leave a comment, especially if you've completed it back in the day as well. Uh, let us know. And we'll be back very soon.